Good morning and welcome back to Caribou Country Lifestyle. My name is Cheryl. Today I'm going to be doing another garden tour. We're almost at the end of July. We were gone for just over a week and when we came back um, we had some wildfires going on. So we came back two, three days ago and our River Valley Trail a tree had fallen onto one of the hydro lines and ended up starting a fire and it was super windy here which just it just wreaked havoc and took off from there and I'm on a, a neighborhood chat on messenger and my phone was just exploding with different comments about what was going on and here we are we're driving back from Enderby and we were just in Salmon Arm so we were like still four hours away from our destination of getting home to find out that our town there's a fire that's going through our town it ended up actually taking out two businesses along a um, very busy side road that leads to our mills and to it actually also leads it runs alongside of the River Valley Trail and uh, one of the businesses they have it's an auto wrecker place and I guess like tires were blowing up cars were blowing up that's what I heard I don't know um, if that's a hundred percent true but we had a severe thunder and lightning and heavy rain last night um, unfortunately it started up with the lightning started up a couple more fires but with that heavy rain it basically took away all of the smoke that we had going on because when we came back here it was really smoky it was pretty crazy thank goodness that my sister-in-law offered to come and turn on our air conditioner in our house so that helped immensely so that was wonderful so I want to take you around to do a little garden tour I've already went through and pruned and tied my tomatoes oh some of it's going to be the death of me those one those tomatoes that I'm not pruning and taking out the suckers and uh, you will see but I so my OCD when it comes to that I really like the looks of the tomatoes when I'm pruning them heavily and tying them and uh, yeah you'll see why so let's take a look and we'll start over here at my snap pea side. I just want to show you. I got this from Value Village. Isn't that cute? It has butterflies, little butterfly house. I think it cost me like five bucks. But it's uh, super cute. So I got that recently on my travels. So let's go down. These are the Oregon... Uh, they are not a snap pea. I thought these were a snap pea, but they're actually a snow pea. But they're doing really good. They're starting to produce peas now, so that's awesome. Down below, we have our onions. I finally figured it out. So this row right here, that is the Elsa Craig. And I only have two onions for that. In behind those are the red onions and then in the front are the Walla Walla onions over here this is my gold rush zucchini it was late getting started but I thought it would have grown a lot more than it did because I have other um, zucchini plants that are doing a heck of a lot better than that here we have my fennel it could look a lot better but it's coming along and then we have 
this is all my asparagus ferns growing in here. Back there, that is the osteospermum. Unfortunately, my cilantro went to seed, but I have some volunteer dill coming up in a couple of spots there. Here I have my rosemary and here is the green zucchini. So notice the difference in size as opposed to my gold rush zucchini and covering in behind there is thyme. I have another osteospermum. In behind I have the glad bulbs that I planted. They're growing along really nicely. In front of the glads are my China gold cabbage. And then over on this side we have the Swiss chard, the rainbow bright lights Swiss chard. Then we come over into this bed. There I have a sunflower finally making its way Beside the sunflower, those are a couple of leeks. And then beside the leeks, I have uh, the royal burgundy beans. And they are setting flowers, so we'll be having beans pretty soon. Now down over here, these are my improved long green onions. And then I also have my market more onions. And then uh, onions, oh my gosh. These are cucumbers. Improved long green cucumbers, market more cucumbers, and then I had a volunteer cucumber come in here. This is the one I started. This is the one that volunteered and started growing, so I'm gonna leave it. Here we have some more of my leeks. I did mound some of the dirt up around my leeks. I had read that was good for blanching your leeks to have the thick part at the bottom. It blanches it so it stays white. Got a uh, Cracker Jack Marigold almost getting ready to open up here. Then there are my eggplants. These little guys, uh, I think those are the sweet peas by the looks of it. That I, I planted the seeds and then I couldn't remember what the heck I had planted, but it looks like sweet peas. Then that's some more of the eggplant. Coming over here, we have the dragon tongue bush beans. I'm not seeing any flowers on them yet, but I do have some buds on my snapdragon though. I've already deadheaded some snapdragons as well. These are the China Gold Carrots. And in behind that, I have the spaghetti squash. And I've started training my spaghetti squash to go up the vine. And going up the panel, I should say. Okay, got a little white alyssum. Another white alyssum. These are the Danver Half Long carrots and they are growing really nice coming all the way along here and then over here it's like wow look at my dwarf green curled kale I'm gonna have to pick that that's for sure these are the bull's blood beets And then I'm going to show you my tomatoes from behind. So here I have a sun gold cherry tomato. Got some little cherry tomatoes showing up there. This one is a sun gold. And I have, I'm just going to count from the bottom here. Give me a sec. I have one, two, three, four liters on this so I had to tie this branch I had to tie this branch I had to tie this branch and I had to tie this branch these are all coming off of one plant hence the reason why 
I like pruning them. Then this one here, this is the natural black cherry. I ended up with two liters on that one. And I think that's just because we weren't, I wasn't here to actually um, make sure that that second one didn't start. And then over here we have the chocolate sprinkles, but they're making their way up the panel. I've got everything tied and pruned and cleaned up except for that one. Okay, so here we have the natural Toscano kale, the dinosaur kale. It is quite big. I'm going to have to pick some of that. Down here in these carrots, these are garlic nanti carrots that I have here. Again, on the other side, more of my kale. So looking at this sunburst zucchini squash plant, it was nowhere near this big before we went on holidays and it's huge that's why I'm confused about that gold rush zucchini okay down here we have cylinder beets and I'm just gonna show you I got one really nice cylinder beet in there I could pick that if I wanted to so all the way down here cylinder beets in behind the beets. These are my pickling cucumbers and I've been training them to vine up the panel as well. Got lots of flowers. Got some little baby cucumbers starting to form. So that's exciting. Got some more here, little baby cucumbers. These are all the cylinder beets. Got a little calendula growing there my volunteer annual bunching onions. Here's my celery. This one seems to be doing really well compared to these two. And then I've got another one under here under the sunburst squash and it seems to be doing pretty good too. And there, look at that calendula. That's so pretty. Okay, over on this side, I ended up planting some more of the Hakiri salad turnips. The thing about my last two plantings of the Hakiri salad turnips, if you don't get to them and pick them um, right around the 35 day mark, and also it could still happen, you run a risk of having root maggots. And I did. When I picked mine, I had root maggots in it. I mean, I cut off the bad parts and ate the rest of it. I mean, it was totally fine. But one way that you can prevent those root maggots is putting covers over your plants. And what that does is that just keeps from any of those root maggots being able to form and develop and start attacking your Hakuri salad turnips. Now there are other ways of preventing the root maggots. So from what I was reading, you can pour hot boiling water with um, lemon juice, not lemon juice, sorry, vinegar in the water so I forget what the ratio was on that. I'll have to uh, get my paperwork and I'll get back to you about what that is. But hot water and vinegar, I know that was one of the things that they said. So I wanted to talk to you about a kind of touch base on the whole root maggots. Now they have some various ways of um, dealing with the root maggots and one of them was to put sprinkling demiotaceous earth around the on the dirt and what that will do is that demiotaceous earth will cut through those root maggots but the only problem with that is if you're watering on a daily basis which when it's hot like this and that's what I do I go out every morning and water well you would have to reapply that demiotaceous earth. So, and then another way, you can set up those yellow sticky tape that um, the bugs go on to it and then they're stuck to it. And you can get those, I've even gotten them at the dollar store. 
but you can get them at Walmart, Canadian Tire, any big stores and um, what you do is you set up the sticky tack and then you put them, they have uh, holders to put the sticky tape onto and then you just push that holder into the ground and what it does is it gets the adult root maggot flies, the ones that are actually drop laying the eggs of the maggots uh, on your soil. And that's another reason why you would use those um, floating row covers over your plants as that what it helps to protect for those root maggot flies that come and lay their eggs over the on the ground and over the plants. And when I was talking about the boiling water with vinegar, so what you're going to do is you're going to do one part vinegar to three parts boiling water. So if you were going to do six cups of boiling water, you would have two cups of vinegar mixed in with it. And then you're just going to pour that boiling water over the ground and then that will attack those root maggots and dealing with it. And you can do that not just for the hikiri salad turnips, you could do that for any of the salad turnips or any of the turnips that you would have issues with root maggots for. So I just kind of wanted to let you know more about that. I ended up Googling it because my sister said the same thing, like she lives in Saskatchewan and she had the same problem. Now I've planted these in, and I've planted them in a different spot uh, when I planted them in the second succession sowing that I did, I actually got to them before too many of the root maggots got to those. So, I mean, that's the other thing, you know, if you want, you want to definitely pick them around the 35 day mark from the time that you plant them. So maybe just make a note of that. Okay, back in here, these are my kohlrabi. And I've got some coming in really nice. These are small yet, won't be picking any of these. I'm looking at all of these. Oh, I could pick that one. You want them about the size of a, a tennis ball. So that's getting there. These ones are still too small, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna pick this one. That is like the perfect size. For the kohlrabi. So we'll be picking that today. Another calendula growing in here. These are my pole, pole snap peas that I have. And there's one ready to be picked. I love it. In front of the pole snap peas, uh, the golden Detroit beets. I don't have a ton of them and I did reseed them as well. But I was reading up on that too. And if you, when you seed your beets, you wanna make sure it's actually not too cold. I'm just gonna pick this weed. So you wanna make sure it's not too cold when you plant your beets. They actually prefer a little bit of warmer temperatures and so that could have had a lot to do with why I had to reseed my beets as much as I did. Okay coming over here we have the butter crunch lettuce. So that... I picked that before we went on holidays and I took it with us and I used it uh, in place of buns. So uh, we ate uh, a lot of hamburgers, smokies, hot dogs. You know, sometimes we had them for lunch, sometimes we had them for dinner. And what I do with the hamburger in place of the bun, I would take two leaves of the butter crunch lettuce, fold it and have two stacked on top of one another after I had folded it, and then did another two on the other side put my mayo, relish, mustard, whatever you put on it, pickles, onions, put my burger on, put the other part on, and I just ate it that way. I mean, it's a little bit messy, but I just find I uh, don't want to be eating a, a lot of bread 
And then the same thing I did for my hot dogs and for my Smokies. I just took those lettuce leaves, wrapped, put my condiments on, wrapped it up and ate it that way. And I, I actually quite enjoy it that way. So definitely need to pick some more today. Okay, beside the buttercrunch lettuce, I have my rutabagas. And I can see in here, if you look, there's a couple of rutabagas forming looking good in the back i'm hiding some marigolds got a calendula right there this tomato here this is the black crim another black crim and then here is my aunt ruby's german green pruned staked Lots of thyme, got lots of flowers on those. And on the end here, that's another black crim. Coming over to this side, we have my California Wonder. Not looking so great. It hasn't really done a whole heck of a lot. But you come over to my Big Bertha and look at the difference of the Big Bertha. It's almost to the top. This one is starting to get, I have a little flower bud right here. So I'm almost getting ready to take these covers off of this. And I think it had a lot to do with the heat that we had. We had anywhere from uh, 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. This one here, Something was munching away and I found the culprit. I had two cutworms in there, so I pulled them out and I fed them to my chickens. That'll teach those cutworms. Okay, coming over here, look at this romaine lettuce. That is just beautiful. It definitely needs to be picked though. Again, here's my cayenne pepper. Look at how beautiful that is. Once I get some buds and flowers on there, I'll be pulling these cozy coats off. Cute little marigolds. Here's my other cayenne looking just as good. Come around here. We have the calendula just about to open up. And then over here we have my Amish paste cut or pruned and tied. This Amish paste not pruned and tied. This new girl, not pruned and tied up, but this new girl, I've pruned it quite a bit and tied it up as well. Coming over here, we have the flower garden, my Genevieve's basil down there. Got some snapdragons, alyssum. This is a stalks, portulaca, another snapdragon, some lobelia, geraniums. Oh, look at that Asiatic lily. That's gorgeous. Another stalks, portulaca. Look at this borage. Haven't seen too many pollinators coming in and being around that, but deadheaded some of the buds on these snapdragons and on this one too, but it's got new ones coming in ready to bloom as well. Isn't that Lobelia pretty? Here we have the green or the curled kale, I should say. Another color of the Asiatic lilies. Don't know what that one's going to be in the middle. Then we have the flat leaf parsley also. Some more alyssum, more lobelia, another pretty snapdragon. Look at the monk's hood. I see some bees on that one now that it's got flowers on it. But I want to come over here and look at that. The bee is right up inside there. 
inside that flower. It's coming out. There it is. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Then we have the lavender. Another lily. Another color of a lily. And then here we have the ruby lavatera. I can't wait to see the flowers on that. My bucket of flowers and mint is just growing absolutely beautiful. We have snapdragons, calabracoa, got a marigold coming in here. That because I have, this is the rose that I got on clearance last year. And it's just about, it's supposed to be a heavily scented rose. This is the Queen Elizabeth Glendiflora Rose. I can't wait to see that open. My other bucket of flowers, my marigolds. I ended up picking up a few extra flowers. So this is the osteospermum like I have. Isn't that pretty? Portulaca. This one doesn't look very... Oh, it's ripped right out. That's why it doesn't look very good. It's ripped right out. That was probably the deer. The deer have been having fun with some of my plants. Got a little petunia. I can't remember what this is called. Well, the floating row covers, these ones are the netted. And they are doing really well at keeping the bugs out. This is my Scorpio cabbage, that first one. The Lennox cabbage. These are the no-name cabbages because I had them given to me, so I'm not sure what variety those are. And, but look at my poor cauliflower. I think I'm going to have to uh, pull those out. That one's not looking very good either. So those did not do very well. I have another cauliflower here and there and there. So here's hoping I'll get something from those. Here we have the bonbon squash. Got a beautiful couple of flowers going on in there starting to spread its wings vining out another bonbon squash got another vine coming out the side my mashed potato squash my potatoes so the flowers flowering part is finished and some of them as you can see have kind of fallen over the top skip pretty heavy so we just have to wait I mean I could see if I have any new potatoes but I'll just wait here over here we have a mix of my sunny V corn and in this squash in amongst that that is the butternut squash that I have growing then we come to the candy roaster squash this is just vining out like crazy. And I have a couple of flowers. There's one down there. And we, it's vining all the way out here. It's almost, it's almost holding hands with the other candy roaster squash. And that candy roaster squash has made its way out through the fence that we have going around and is climbing up the side of the fence. That's hilarious. And then this one's vining out towards my pumpkin. Now for my pumpkin, I have, I don't know if you can see that. Get a little closer. There we have a pumpkin growing there. And I've seen some other ones too. So that's not the only one. I have another one coming in right there. So it's coming along. This pumpkin has also grown out through the fence out the other side. Got lots of blooms on this pumpkin plant. I guess I still have a couple of flowers on these ones still coming out. 
Okay, we're now we're in the berry and fruit side of the garden. Got a lot of strawberries. I told my watering girl if she, you know, seen any strawberries to pick them, but I definitely need to come in here and pick the strawberries. Like, look at all of those. There's so many, and some of them are just huge. I'll have to definitely come with a big bowl and come and pick these. But hey, that's that's what we want. We want lots of strawberries. Got a couple of those that are over and just need to be removed or it won't produce more. So over here, we've got some raspberries ready to be picked. Another one over there. So I'll have to bring a little dish and start picking my raspberries. Oh yeah, look at there. Got raspberries growing in there. A bunch over on this side. Looks good. Oh yeah, lots in there. Definitely need to be picked. And then we'll come over here. Here is my elderberry, just loaded with blooms. Filled all the way around. I'm gonna have to come in here and pick the weeds. We gotta get on top of that too, not let it get crazy. This is the Hascap bush. And you can see the little blue Hascaps growing on there. Those can be picked. Do I have any on this one? No, I don't see any. My blue, blue plum tree. And here is the sour cherry tree. Still waiting for the sour cherries to start to ripen. And then we'll be able to pick those. But yeah, that's it for my berry side. Right, Callie? My baskets are looking good. Come over to this one. Oh, it looks even better. All kinds of beautiful flowers. And some Dusty Miller. And then we've got flowers in down here. And over here. Very nice. The deer have been in here though. Like you look down here and then look at that hollyhock. The deer were eating that. My poor leaves. I wish I could get some buds on there. But not if they're going to be eating it. They just have eaten the tops off of everything. Especially like the pansies I noticed. And then I come over here in my buckets and I had all kinds of flowers in here and they have just made a salad bar out of it. You look over there, same thing. Those dang deer. Okay, we're at the last part of the tour. This is all of my plants on the deck. This is the cream sausage and as you can see I have little tomatoes growing off of there and then look at that it's just filled with cherry tomatoes these are the Toscano tomatoes and my the yellow tumbling tomatoes got some pretty flowers there nice little mix over here this is a lemon boy it's getting quite tall Behind it on the table is another lemon boy. Lots of buds and flowers on that. And then down there, that is another cream sausage. That one doesn't have any tomatoes on it like the other one does. My poor pansy and marigold while we were gone got a little crispy. And then that's the basil. Just a regular sweet basil. Okay, we come over here 
And this one on this side, this is the Manitoba. The leaves are looking a little crispy on that. Then in behind, some pretty flowers. Got some petunias lining off to the side. This one here is the Indigo Rose. It's a cherry tomato. And this one here, this is the San Marzano. Got some flowers there. This is the cherry tomato with the Terenzo and the yellow tumbler as well. We have a celebrity. And these are all bush variety tomatoes. They don't need to be pruned heavily. I just pruned the bottom leaves off of these and that was it. I'm not pruning out any of the suckers. So that's a celebrity. This is another indigo rose. Some cute marigolds underneath. My jalapeno peppers. And if you look right there, I have a flower on the jalapeno peppers. So that's going to be starting. Cute little marigolds. My flowers. More of my flowers are looking good. My other jalapenos on this side. I don't see any flowers on them yet. And this is another Manitoba tomato. And another San Marzano tomato. But we have a, San, a tomato showing up on that one. So that's great. And another bucket of flowers. So that's the end of my tour. I tried to make it fairly quick. It's not going to be quite as hot today as it has been. Um, today is supposed to be around 21 degrees. I mean, it's still hot enough, but it's better than 36, 38, and 40 degrees, which is what we had when we were in Enderby. We stayed in Enderby for probably about five days. They have a river float that you can do. So we did that three times. Uh, Jamie and Austin went to the drive-in and uh, seen the double feature. They had Despicable Me 4 and The Fall Guy. If I could stay awake for the first movie, I might go, but I can't even stay awake for the first movie, so I don't even bother. So I've got a lot of picking to do today, as you've seen, and I also have to refill my hummingbird feeder too. It's uh, been, I don't know how long that's been low, but I made some more hummingbird food, so I'm gonna fill that up too. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, throw a like in there, and if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. So thanks for joining me, and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.